Hypoplasty, vertebroplasty, um, really great in augmenting big constructs. Um, we talked about screws and kind of a similar technique. We're just going to be focusing on the basics here. Um, also, some patients that have severe bone pain and kind of as a palliative practice, if they're maybe not the best surgical candidate. Um, and then also, you know, we see patients that have radiation. You know, there's 20 to 30 percent of those patients will go on to have a fracture and have a, a painful uh, compression fracture. So uh, very common practice in our, in our tumor patients. So we are going to start up at the top here. Um, so if we give ourselves, you can see over on the camera, we've kind of put in some of our jam sheety needles ahead of time, very similar to uh, MIS technique. Um, we're going to start with our spine jack on the top here. So we have a guide wire. So go ahead, Zach, and we will um, grab your uh, cannula here. And I also wanted to thank um, Stryker here for helping us with all this instrumentation and uh, helping us to put on the course today. Okay. So as we're placing, um, we want to be mindful of this wire. Get, get a shot there. Yeah, so that is not what you want to see. Um, and that's the... Um, <laughs> So we will, we will not be putting any uh, cement on this level. So where that, um, this is a reamer. Go ahead and give us a shot. Can we save that last image? Yeah. We'll, we'll put some cement in here just to show you what not to do as well. Um, give us a shot. Um, so we do want to back that up quite a bit um, to where we want this spine jack to actually go. And so go ahead and remove the wire and you're gonna to wanna to remove that inner cannula as well. So this is the reamer that's coming out. Shot. Okay, and so now we have a nice trajectory for this spine jack to go in. And we would use this in um, one of your very kyphotic uh, compression fractures where there's a lot of mm -hmm. kind of collapse and we want to uh, bring those end plates back up into more an anatomic position. Shot, please. Okay, and so you may want to tap that forward just a touch. Okay, shot there. All right, now go ahead and crank that up. This? So you, you want to hold that, keep it stable, and go ahead and give us some rotations. Mm -hmm. And we'll take a shot. So you can see that is expanding. And, you know, again, we're trying to fairly normal vertebral body here. Mm. This would be used in a more kyphotic segment. Is it locked? Shot. Wow. Okay. And you can see it's hit that end plate and it will adjust to it. Um, to really lift it up, and we'll see how much we can get. Shot. Mm. It's almost Very maxed locked. out. Okay. Back this off. All right, give us another shot. So that's all in, and this, um, if we had not violated the anterior cortex, we could put cement behind this. And this is just an adjuvant tool to give you a little bit more height. Um, let's go ahead and mix, do we have a cement mixed up? All right, ready to go, awesome. So um, we are gonna do kind of a more vertebroplasty technique here. So we're gonna um, check this cement, make sure it's, a, it's fluid enough. So right. just give us a little bit of a crank there. And just briefly, um, so we can see how that's fairly liquid. Um, with the vertebroplasty technique, you're not actually making any sort of a void. So you're ex expecting this uh, cement to kind of interdigitate with the um, kind of cancellous aspect of the bone. 
So this is a totally pure um, vertebral body. We didn't create any cavity there. Give us a shot. Okay. And so we're going to adjust this down a little. Shot again. You want to get this into the anterior third. And we use a lot of floral here because even if we didn't violate that anterior body, we want to look for extravasation. So go ahead and just slowly start cranking that up. Okay, give us a shot. You can see it's starting to fill. Give us another shot. And again, this cement will tend to transfer back towards the epidural space. Um, and so you, even after you put the cement in, you want to make sure it's very well clear of that posterior third shot. Okay, and that's, so that's probably enough there. Um, maybe give it a couple more turns. But again, that's going to float back because of the venous pressure of the, um, of the blood. And so that's probably good. So we're going to switch next to a um, kyphoplasty technique. So go ahead and come on out with that. So we've already prepared these um, two trajectories. Shot there. Okay. And so we're going to be placing our balloons down. So this one um, is a little bit of a large um, trajectory there, so just be, be careful with that. So I'm going to put my side down here. Shot. You can see the markers are going to give us shot again. Um, give us the, the point where the, actually I need to drill mine a little bit more. So go ahead and place yours down. That's going to show you where your balloon is. And you want to just make sure that that is clear of the cannula so that when you expand the balloon, you're not going to have any of that balloon kind of catching on shot. And so I'm just drilling there, making sure I have room for my balloon to go down. Shot, shot again, and I would push yours just a touch forward because you can see you're kind of close to the cannula, or you can back the cannula up. Shot, okay, and so we're clear there. We've got a nice spot, and so what we're going to do is gently go up on the pressure here, and you can actually feel kind of a tactile feedback of when you're starting to get some pressure against your moving bone shot. You can see those balloons filling up. How high do you go? So what's the recommendation for you guys? How high can we crank these up before they pop? Or before, shot? <laughs> exactly. Each vendor has a little bit. Those are 800 PSI. So maximum 800 PSI. And so you'll see with these um, kind of levers here, there's a pressure dial. Um, and that will kind of tell us how much pressure we're under. Um, uh, stop there, shot. Okay, so it looks like it's filling up well. You also want to check an AP, um, but you can actually fill it up. The, the bone will kind of um, expand a little bit. You'll see the pressure come down, and then you can fill it up a little bit more. So that's, that's a very nice fill. Um, and I want to say on my side, I could probably do a little bit more. Shot. But that's, that's actually very nice, is kind of what you want to see with your kyphopacity balloons at good location. So we'll come back to a lateral. So now we're going to come down with those balloons. Yeah, other way. So unlock here and pull straight back on this technique. For, for these, do we pull straight back? Mm -hmm. And so you can see, give us a shot on lateral. Okay, you can see that balloon come down, and we'll just pull it all the way back, and that should empty them out. Shot again. What? You can see that they're empty, and those should be able to come right out. Mm -hmm. Come on out. Mm -hmm. 
All right, we've got more cement here. Great, welcome, Jeff. So it'd start on this side because we've got a nice trajectory shot. And so you're right up towards the front where we want to be. And again, maybe waited a little bit long with our cement, but that's okay, shot. Okay, good. And you'll kind of want to match that fill that you saw with the kyphoplasty balloon. Shot again. Okay, that's plenty on that side. We'll come to our opposite side here. Shot. Okay, and hard to tell exactly where you are. You might want to use an AP, but we'll just go ahead and, and fill it. Shot. Okay, go ahead. Shot again. Okay, keep going. Getting that contralateral fill. You can see, shot again, how that cloud is kind of getting darker with the double density that we're seeing. Shot again. Mm. All right, that looks pretty good to me. So let's come back to an AP. You need one more? Yeah, well, I'm going to see what we're not supposed to do as well. Shot. All right, and we see those kind of bridge coming across. That gives us a lot uh, stronger support of the vertebral body. Cool. And so here, I'm kind of feeling the opposite side. Shot. Let's see how much you got left in this. Shot again. All right, let's come to a lateral. I'm actually going to try and fill behind the spine jack and see how that goes. Shot, please. So, despite. Oh. So, we're using the last of our cement and seeing. Where it goes, shot again. So this is just to show that you can fill behind that spine jack. And despite having violated the anterior wall, we didn't get any uh, good extravasation. That's always what we're looking for in this, making sure cement doesn't go into the wrong spot. So it looks like we were pretty successful. Um, yeah, that's about it. Any questions? That's great, Amir. <clears throat> that's terrific. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, you know, uh, for at least for me, the um, there's clear advantages <clears throat> to be able to do this during surgery, um, and especially with tumor work. Um, I think the applications of it, and now with augmenting, um, you know, with fenestrated screws, it's really changed the game. So yeah, absolutely. I think the fenestrated screws are, are very valuable, um, giving us much more fixation. You know, some vendors say five times the pullout strength, um, but the same things apply. You really have to be mindful of where that cement's going. Um, I find in post-op CTs, you'll almost always see a little epidural uh, collection of cement, and it's usually not clinically significant, mm -hmm. but um, can be very worrisome for thermal injury. So always using good technique. Great job, Zach and, and Amir. Um, hey, I have a question. So how much proprioceptive feedback did you have when you put the spine jack in versus a kyphoplasty? Obviously, one is a directional technique, the other one is non-directional balloon-based, but did you have any proprioceptive feedback with increasing resistance with either technique? Yeah, it got tighter as it was opened up more. Uh, it wasn't fine proprioception, but there was definitely some proprioception. And again, I would want to try it in a, a truly collapsed vertebra um, because the idea is that you're trying to move that up into a more anatomic position. So I think a cadaver doesn't really give us the, the full effect. Um, but I think in, in one of those very collapsed non-unions, I think it would be helpful. I have a question. Yeah, please. Yeah, a quick question. Um, one is, uh, have you ever had any issues with the spine jack of breaking the end plates by expanding it? I, I have never yeah, used it, um, but I would sorry. love to hear anybody else, um, you know, who has more experience with the spine jack. Okay. The other uh, other issue is if you you know whether there was any need at time to remove it because of infection or something like that, how difficult it is. 
Because now you've got this spine jack with cement wrapped all around it, right? From my understanding, this is not a collapsible device. So if it is, you know, you have to really like your position um, before you start using it um, because the, there is no um, recommended guide to remove it. But I say, if you, let's say you develop an infection at the uh, vetivoplasty site, and these are difficult infection to eradicate because now you got cement, you know, involved with infection. This is very porous, so it's very hard to eradicate the tuberoplasty infection. And at times, when the infection is bad, you got to do a vertebrectomy. You got to have you, are there any documented cases of, of a need to remove this this implant from a vertebrae when something happened. And and what's the experience of using it with patients who have metastases with lytic lesions and things like that? Yeah, again, I, I have not used this device clinically, so I would love uh, anyone else who has more familiarity with it um, to, to chime in. So, Udi, it's a newer device, um, at least in our hospital. Rod, we lost okay. it. Oh, okay. So, I think it's a... Uh... All right, you're back. You're it's back. In it's a newer device, Udi, um, and yeah. I think there's a lot of experience. We just got it approved in our system. Um, yeah. Those are excellent questions, um, and I think, you know, there's probably more experience in Europe um, and uh, other places. So, but I, I think that's a valid concern that you brought up. 